I, I got to get on this Jonte Porter thing. I, I got to get on it. I, you know, I say I say this a lot, and I kid, I kid with people. I say, you know, that people are stupid and and people are dumb, and that's the dumbest decision that I've ever heard of. Jonte Porter literally, people made one of the dumbest decisions that I think I've heard of in my entire life. He literally, 13 bets, got a lifetime ban. For anybody that doesn't know, Jonte Porter was given a lifetime ban yesterday from the NBA. The reason why is because he decided to make bets not just on on sports, not just on NBA games. He bet on his team and his team to lose. And then he made prop bets on himself, a $80,000 prop bet for a guy that's averaging 3.8 points a game. He bet $80,000 that he wasn't going to score four points in the game. He was going to underperform in the game. The payout was like $1.5 million. He plays three minutes or four minutes. All of a sudden, he doesn't play the rest of the game because he's sick. And the the betting platform is like, hold on a second. Who in the hell, number one, is betting $80,000 on Jonte Porter to underperform? That makes no sense. And then all of a sudden, he goes out there and plays eight games. Wait a second. We need to look into this. Well, lo and behold, they looked into it, and it was his dumb ass. Lord have mercy. I, I just don't get And then they put a freeze on it and said, nope. We ain't paying this out, man. We we smell a rat. <laughs> we ain't paying this money out. We smell a rat. 13 bets this idiot made. The total winnings were 76,000. He ended up only getting $21,965. So basically, he was making $415,000 a year on his two-way contract. So he gave up. Let's just say he never played again. Let's just say this was this was it. This was his contract. He was willing to give up four hundred and fifteen thousand dollars and the the possibility to ever play in the NBA ever again. Over twenty one thousand nine hundred and sixty five dollars. I, I I just I'm trying, I'm trying, but I can't do it. I can't fraud of the week, fraud of the century is John. I, I don't even think that's fraud. I think that's just the idiot of a lifetime. I mean, it's got Pete Rose all over the place. It's, I mean, it oozes of Pete Rose. Lord have mercy. Lifetime ban for $21,000. Oh, by the way. If you needed the money, let's just say, you know what? I'm in over my head. I got a bunch of credit card debt. You know, I, I need some help. I got to get out of this. Instead of going to bet, you know what? I'm going to call my brother. And maybe my brother can help me out. He's got a good job. My brother makes about $36 million a year. I'm going to call him. My brother's got a $179 million contract guaranteed coming to him. Maybe my brother can help me out with a couple of dollars. Did he call him? Nope. I'll just bet my way out of it. Because you know that has to be what it is. Oh. Oh, my goodness. I just don't get it. Woo. Hold on now, Brandon. Don't say Pete Rose. They they just didn't say. It. You can't tell me that Pete Rose wasn't betting while he was playing. Don't don't start that. Pete Rose while he was playing lived, literally lived at the dog track and at the horse track. Don't tell me that that Pete Rose wasn't betting on baseball while he was playing. I don't want to hear it. Now they may not be able to prove that he was doing it. But I don't want to hear that Pete Rose wasn't betting. No, he just, you know what? I'm done playing. I'm a degenerate gambler. 
but all of a sudden, I'm, I'm just going to start betting on baseball when I'm a manager. I don't believe that for a second. Now, again, they may not be able to prove it, but I know what I know about people, and Pete Rose was betting the entire time. He just was. He just was. Ugh. Yes, Jonte is Michael Porter Jr.'s brother. That's what I'm saying. If, if you needed the money, because you're betting, I mean, let, look, people say gambling is a disease. I'm not here to dispute that. That's not my expertise. I'm a sports guy. I'm not here to tell you about the psychological uh, deficiencies of a gambler. That's not what I do. So I'm not here to say that. All I know is if you're in trouble and you need the money, your brother's got the money. Now, maybe your brother is the tightest man in America and he's not going to help you. Okay. That's fine. But I bet he will because his brother did come out and say, I can attest to his character. I've known him all my life. I don't think he would throw away his career for a couple of dollars. Turns out he was wrong. Turns out he was wrong. Man, that guy is stupid. Just stupid. The man side shows. I wonder if he got paid millions on the side. Well, that's a good point. But I would bet that he didn't because you can you don't have to go through crazy bookies anymore to make these bets. I mean, sports gambling is legal in a lot of places. So you don't have to you don't have to make side bets to do any of that. You can make them legal. You know, you can do it legally. I'm still trying to figure out because they haven't really said it was like, was he making the bet? Like, did they track it back to his credit card? Because if that happened, he's the dumbest person on earth. He didn't even go the Otani route. You know, Otani was betting, and I don't care what you say, Otani was betting. I don't care what you say, Otani was betting. At least he had a fall guy. He used the interpreter. Where's his interpreter? Where's his boy to take the fall? Hell, they got John T. Porter. He was giving inside information to people. Oh, my God. I don't get it. Oh, Lord have mercy. Just an, giving inside information on, the, on your team and then making bets based that us. Uh, ugh. Woo. And I know people are dumb in this world. And I get that. This is just stupid. This is just stupid. Whew. Yes. Him disclosing confidential information to people probably got him paid a little. Yeah, you're right. But that in itself, the I, I think the betting is bad. And I think he could have been banned. And maybe he had an opportunity. Because I don't think that he's going to get an opportunity to get back into the league. It's not the bet. The betting is bad. Don't get me wrong. But it's the disclosing of the confidential information that got him the lifetime ban and is going to get him, no, you're never coming back. I don't care. Ten years down the road, you're never coming back. That's what got him banned for life. Oh. Yeah, I just, I, I don't understand it. I really don't. I'm trying to understand, man. I'm trying to make him understand. He is just dumb. Again, you don't need the money. I, I don't care. If your brother, again, they're brothers. If you're in trouble, like real trouble, I got to believe that his brother would help him. You know, if they're going to take your house from you, like, like he had a condo and they're going to foreclose on it. I got to believe that your brother would help you. He's not going to let you just sit out in the cold. I got to believe that. Maybe he wouldn't. I don't know him. But maybe he wouldn't. If he really needed the money for something crazy. But just for betting, I mean, I wouldn't, if I was his brother, I wouldn't give him the money for that either. No. No. That's, that's what's wild to me. 
You got a brother that's making $36 million damn dollars a year. Whew. That's brutal. That is brutal. I don't get it. I don't understand it. But it is what it is. It is what it is, people. Lord have mercy. TikTok's doing its thing again. I apologize. It's over here kicking you off, just knocking you out of the app. I don't know what's going on. I apologize, people over on TikTok. It's been doing this the last two days. The last two days. So, and you're right, my man Sideshow, they might start looking at his brother if he bet anything on the Nuggets. They might. I believe they probably did. I would guarantee that during the investigation, they looked to see if he bet anything on the Nuggets. And he, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But I think Michael Porter Jr. is probably in the clear because if he wasn't, I think that we would be talking about it and it, it, something would come out. Because look, we love Michael Porter Jr., but he's not no superstar. He's not a guy that they're going to sweep this under the rug to protect. You know, if this was Jokic and Jokic was doing this, they would protect him. You know, they just like Otani. Otani's being protected. So, whoo, whoo. But it is what it is, man. I, I just, it is what it is. There's just dumb people in this world that just can't get out of their own way. $21,000. Let's call it 22 because it was $21,965. let us call it twenty two grand, and you're making four hundred. dollars Forget the, the twenty one dollars you, you were willing to sacrifice $400,000, $415,000 for $22,000. That, that's my whole thing. Who, that's not, if you're a gambler, that's not even a smart gamble. You're willing to, to give this up in order to make that? What are you doing? Oh, Lord have mercy, people. I'm trying, but I can't get there. Jonte Porter, make it make sense. Fraud of the century. Idiot of our lifetime. Because... Although I believe Pete Rose was betting on baseball the entire time, number one, that he was playing, coaching, all of it, they couldn't prove that he was betting on it while he was playing, or at least they didn't come out and say that. Maybe they did have the proof, and they just didn't want to throw him all the way under the bus and said, hey, if you agree to this lifetime ban, we won't come out with the stuff that's going to compromise your career. Maybe that's it. Although people that know anything, they understand that Pete Rose was betting. Just let it slide. Jonte Porter, they got proof. Not only did you bet for your team to lose games, you bet on you underperforming yourself. This is literally the definition of point shaving. Literally the definition of point shaving. That's what this idiot did. Cost yourself. You get all the way to your dream. Your dream of playing in the NBA. You're a fringe guy on a two-way contract, making $415,000 a year. You're doing your thing. You're playing in the NBA. I'd rather bet. Whew. And I don't want to hear from the people that say, sport, hey, the NBA sponsors sports betting. It's on every commercial. You know, why? It's not that big a deal. I don't understand. If they sponsor it, why won't they let the guys do it? Literally for, for Jonte Porter. That's why. Giving out classified information to betters. That's why. That is exactly why. Gee, many Christmas. I, I, that, to me, I don't understand why people always try to go that route with the defense. I don't, I don't get it. They always go that route, talking about, well, 
you know, the, the league sponsors sports betting. Why can't they bet? Because how about a little integrity of the game? We got to have that, don't we? She, not to mention, hey, this is their league. They decide the rules. And when I say they, the commissioner, the owners, the NBA, they make the rules. There's nothing that says that you have to play in the NBA. Nobody forces you to play in the NBA. So if you don't want to abide by their rules, then don't play. But if you do want to be in their league, these are the rules. These are the consequences if you break them. Period. End of story. I've been around a, a, a NFL or an NBA locker room or time for two. Outside the locker room, there is one of the biggest signs out there that says no gambling. I don't know that as a professional that you can walk into a locker room at any time and not see it. It's outside the locker room. Or at least it used to be. Hell, it might be in everybody's locker at this point in time. No gambling. It literally tells you. People do it anyway. People do it anyway. Unbelievable. Let's get to some comments here. Darren Howard got a great comment. He made 400K. Willing to bet he didn't have 400K. Feds take half. Yep. 200K goes fast when you're trying to keep up with your peers. And that would in lies the problem. Trying to keep up with his peers. Maybe he's trying to keep up with his brother. I think his brother's got to tell him, hey, bro, we're going out to dinner. I got it. Okay. You keep your ducats. You stack your chips up. And keep doing this NBA dream. Anytime we go out to dinner, I got it. I, I mean, again, his brother might be the cheapest man in America, and maybe he's like, nope, you're paying. I get that. I get that. You know, that, that that's his brother's money. That's not his money. So I understand that. But Lord. And I and again, I understand trying to keep up with the Joneses. I've been part of that too. When I was younger, trying to keep up with people that I didn't make the same kind of money that they did, but I wanted to do the same things that they were doing. And finally, I got to a point where I'm like, well, shit, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this anymore. You know, they got money to burn. I don't have money to burn. I need to go to the, street, the cheap strip club. I don't need to go to the expensive strip club. Okay. I'm going to need to go to the, the $2 you call it on the drinks. I need to go to that strip club. Then, you know, then I can live a little bit. I don't need to go to the one where it's $100 just to get in. No, oh, no, no, no. That's not me. That's not me. <laughs> you know, or at least it didn't need to be me. And I found alternative ways to go. That, that's just me, though. That's just me. Mike DeRuler. Do y'all think money corrupted him or exposed who he really was? Well, that's kind of the thing, my man, is they always say that money isn't doesn't change you. Money only enhances what you already are. That's always been the golden rule, is that money doesn't change you. Money only enhances what you are already were and now allows you to do. So I don't, maybe he was always a gambler. I don't know. My man Eric over on TikTok makes a great point is that the family is a really religious or Christian family. So, but there's always a black sheep. In every family, there's a black sheep. Somebody that's not doing things the way that they were raised. There's always that in every family. So, unfortunately, this got him caught up. I don't know what he's going to do. Because some people, well, he can go overseas. No, he can't. What overseas team is going to take a guy that's point shaven? His career is over in basketball. It is over. They don't want any part of that over there. You can't go over there and, and be a point shaver. They're not letting you do that. So we'll see. We'll see. And that's a good point. 
My man Sideshow says, I'm not betting on myself to play bad. That's how you know it must be bad. If you're betting on yourself to play bad, well, and technically he got out of the, well, I'm not actually going to play bad. I'm just going to be sick. And so I can't go back into the game. Because I think you get out there, your competitive juices start going, well, I'm not going to let this guy crush me, not to mention I'm on a two-way contract. I can't just go out here and play bad. Because if I go out here and play bad, that'll be the end of that. But if I'm sick, then, hey, you know what? He was sick. He couldn't play. There's a difference. But he ain't slick. He ain't slick. And, and that, that's the whole thing. He's trying to pull the old, hey, I'm going to sit back. I'm the bus driver. I'm going to spin the wheel with my finger. You know, I'm the cool driver. You ain't slick. You ain't slick, Jonte. And they caught your ass. And boom. Professional career, as far as a basketball player, over. Over. Time to go sell insurance. You don't have to do something. You know. But playing basketball, mm-mm, mm-mm. I, I don't even know, like, kid, let's just say he has a degree or he goes and gets his degree. Are you, is he going to coach basketball? Uh, no. I mean, any high school, anybody that does any research on him, I mean, do you want this guy that got kicked out of the league being a teacher? Probably not. Can he coach college basketball? One million percent no. I think his career in basketball is over. And I think it's over. So, it, which is sad. It's sad that somebody would be that dumb. <laughs> it's sad. So, and I think he he's probably a guy, look, let's just be honest. He's better than Giannis's brother. I mean, Giannis's brother has no business being in the NBA. And we all see it every time he gets on the damn court. And Jonte Porter is much better than him. So, I mean, he could have been in the league, even a end of the bench guy for a decade because he's got skills. He does. He's got skills. I'm not saying he'd ever be a star. I'm not saying he's going to be a big time rotation guy. He could have been, but I'm not saying that, but I think he could have been in the league for eight to 10 years doing what he's doing giving you some valuable minutes, being a good practice guy, being a good guy in the locker room. He could have done that. You can make a real good living doing that too in the NBA, a good living. But instead, he chose to gamble, career over. Boom, let's move on.